We are live, guys. How are we doing? A stream that we didn't expect to quite do today, but welcome back. Can you see me? Can you hear me, guys? Let us know in the chat down below. We never thought we'd do this stream. Yes, I know. Before anyone says it, I need a trim. It's not looking so great. And um, Flavor Town, as you can see, on my birthday, by the way. So happy birthday to me from Fleetwood Town. Simon Grayson has been appointed Fleetwood Town manager on a longer term deal. He did join the club back in January on his six month contract to keep Fleetwood up in Sky Bet League One. However, he has been rewarded with a long term deal. Fleetwood Town don't really want to say how long the deal is for some reason. They don't want to own anything specific, but I'm guessing it's going to be um, about two years, three years maximum, I'd, I'd say. Probably a two a second two years with an option of a third year. I think Fleet would have done this to get um, players signing up for next year. I think it's important that Fleet would keep the bulk of their squad and they just add a little, little bit to it. Um, so hopefully um, we can do that. And in this stream, we're going to talk about it. We're going to go through all, um, all of it. So... Let me know. If you've got any questions for us, let me know in the comments down below. And it's going to be an interesting stream, guys. It really is. I'm very much looking forward to going through with it. Now, um, you can hear me. Very good. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, mate. Perfect. <clears throat> Cheers, pal. Appreciate that, mate. Um, forever football. Let me know your opinions on the appointment. Now, Grayson has got four teams out of this league <clears throat> promoted. He's uh, got a promotion from League One to the Championship with Blackpool. He's also got Leeds United promoted from this league. He's got Preston promoted, Huddersfield promoted, just being a few. He is a promotion master um, in League um, League One. And, you know, very, very good manager. He's done it in the Championship as well, uh, where he's done a very good job at stabilising Preston North End. Um, so, we have to give it... Um, um, and now my opinion on Grayson at first, I was not happy about the appointment. I said it was a backward step, poor. How have you gone from Joey Barton, like a chicken boldly pie to Grayson, uh, a veggie pie and away day? But since Grayson has come in, five wins, four draws, three defeats. Now that is a very, very good record. Now it started off Bristol Rovers at home, nil nil draw. Again, Fleetwood was struggling in front of goals. Uh, goal for that one. They got a good, you know, a decent point. And then beat Doncaster 3 1. You wait for goals. It come, it come again. And that win just kind of lifted the spirits. And he, um, he changed the team, really. He went to a back three. Now, the main bulk of his side have been throughout the season has been Cairns in goal. He has signed a new two year deal. Get in there. Party time. Cairns is here to stay for another two years. I love Joey, but have that, Josephine. Um, and then Andrew at left back, he's been an ever present. And then the back three has changed a little bit. He's been Connolly, kind of Connolly, Holgate, and Hill, which I think is great. I'd rather have those three in the back four, uh, back five, as you will, making mistakes this season and them learn from it, then have them all grew there. Uh, we've also had Ryan Rydell coming from the youth team, playing a few minutes there. We've had Mulgrew who's got injured. So it's mainly been those three that I've just said. And then we've had Janai Dineshian at right back or Wes Boone. Both have done very, very well under um, Sam Grayson. In the midfield, it's been the same midfield three pretty much every game. It's been Camps, Rossiter and Batty. Otherwise, it's been Finley, Batty and Rossiter. So I think when... Grayson gets his players to uh, uh, mould into his formation, into a 3-5-2, which he does like to play. He played that at Preston, did very well. They did it at Blackpool, where up till Christmas, I think they beat Alls and they beat Peterborough 4-3. And they, went, they, they were pretty much second or third in the league. They had a couple of games. And then they lost round Christmas, if I remember rightly. I think they lost to Accrington on Boxing Day. They um, also dropped points away at Tramley on the cabbage patch that they called the pitch that season. So... Um, it was an interesting one to see how it did, but you know, he's here to stay now, and uh, 
that, that's kind of his history. But he's got teams out of League One before, you know, Preston. You know, that de they're a decent squad for League One, guaranteed. But, he, you know, we, in my opinion, he went the backwards step for Preston. It was a bit like Moyes when he went from, you know, Everton to United. He was a very, very stable club for the division. They're always, you know, top half of the championship, doing very well. Went to a bigger club. And it didn't quite work for him. Um, so, an interesting one. Let me know your opinion on the uh, thoughts. Um, happy birthday. Cheers, Tyler Sun. Um, the club have to keep Wes Burns. Tony, I'll let you reply to that. No, Wes is a good player. Um, but Wes is good every one in four games. Uh, whereas someone like an Ash Hunter performs pretty much every week where a Paddy Manning performs pretty much every week where a Chen Evans performs pretty much every week you don't know what you're going to get from Wes you're either going to get a, an 8 out of 10 or a 2 out of 10 and I like Wes I think he's a, a very very good player um, so yeah um, it, Mackie what you've got to realise is we're Fleetwood Town we're budget and we're proud we've not been budget and proud the last three years under Joey I'll give you that we've been more splashing the cash and not so proud. Um, I wasn't happy in January, but you can't say you can't give a job to a man that came in when Fleetwood only scored five goals in 14 games. I think it was something like that. We're looking awful. We drew to Wigan twice. We drew to Northampton. We lost to Northampton. We were shot on target against Blackpool. We didn't... Um, I think, you know... Joey's time at Fleet with the end, you know, we weren't being in four, but the performances were woeful. Like, crew away, we got battered. We're going to own, we got battered. Port of away, it was a poor game, to be fair. Um, Blackpool at home, we got battered 1 0, you know, and uh, we didn't have a shot on target. Um, but, you know, since it's come in, five wins, and the wins have come against Doncaster Rovers, they've come against uh, Lincoln. They've come against Accrington, sorry, not Accrington, Ipswich, Gillingham and Shrewsbury. So, you know, four of those are in the top 12. You know, they've drawn against Charlton and Accrington. Accrington, I think, are now in the top 12. Um, so, you know, um, the, and, Black, and Fleet would have lost to, you know, Plymouth Argyle, who were on a good run at the time. It was a poor performance. That I'll, I'll give you that. Sunderland, we didn't have a shot on target. Go on, the boys. You know, no shots on target. Not even a shot, by the way. Um, and then we lost to Swindon Town, which we lost 2 0, but we, we forget about that. We, um, happy birthday, Ben. Nothing like a present from your club signing Grace on a long term. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bite. I'm not gonna bite. Um, no, I'll be honest with you. I wanted someone different in the summer, I wanted someone younger, hungrier, and um, you know, maybe someone in a different direction because Pilly's got a tenure in giving young managers the job. You know, Mickey Mellon, Graham Alexander, um, and Joey Barton being a few, but then he's appointed, you know, experienced managers who probably one of the most, you know, I think Pilly thinks the, in, you know, the inexperienced managers have done the best for us. You know, Pre uh, uh, Alexander, I can't believe I knew he just said Prezi did the best for us. Jesus Christ. Um, Alexander and Barton, but realistically, Uwe Rosler did miracles with Fleetwood. Alexander got a side that had very, very good plays in, you know, John Parkin, uh, Ian Hume, Matty Blair, Charlie Taylor, um, you had Cresswell, Chris Maxwell, Josh Morris. That was a good squad. You know, that, that's just naming a few, David Ball, Conor McLaughlin. You know, that squad was probably... Second best in the league, we went through the playoffs, and I think if you speak to most of the squad that year, we underachieved through wrong tactics. I didn't mind Alexander, but Uwe Rosler, literally, he had a midfield three of Victor. One of these games, we had a midfield three of Victor Nierenold, Connor McLaughlin, and George Glendon. Glendon is a decent player, by the way, but plays in the National League right now. But Victor Nierenold and Connor McLaughlin in midfield. Uwe finished fourth with that squad. And then the next season, you got a three-year deal and you got sacked six months later. So that's how you work it. But the experience managers for Fleetwood have actually not done a bad job. You know, Grayson is experienced. You know, he's managed Bradford, Sunderland, Blackpool twice, Leeds, Huddersfield, Preston. Um, he also, I think, did a, 
a bit of time in non-league and he helped David Dunn out at Barrow. I'm not going to comment on his time helping out at Barrow because he only won about two games. Um, thing is, Jordan, I'm there to support the club. You're going to get times at a football club where you don't get a manager that you want, where you, you, your squad isn't so good, but we have to be there to support the lads. It's as simple as that. And I tried great enough and I, I hammered him, but it's, I've got to stay professional. I've got to stay unbiased. And he's done a decent job. Can you name me any other manager that would have done better with that squad that he's got? Bear in mind, right, he's lost Paddy Manning out star striker. He's had Paddy Manning out with the outbreak of this horrible disease right now. He's had one of his best defenders, well, in his eyes, one of the defenders at Fleetwood out injured in Charlie Mulgrew. He's had Whelan out for three or four months. He's had, you know, he's had a lot of luck to go against him, but he promotes youth. You know, he's going to use our youth academy, Hilly, Holgate, Rydell, Garner. Garner was a no-man's boy six six weeks ago. Came in against Africans and people were giving him absolute stick. Four goals, four assists at Gates. I think 12 or 13 games. Since he's come back, I think he scored two goals, got two assists. He's been brilliant. You know, the sell up front. And when you have a manager in place right now, you have that security. Players want to sign on. You know, Cairns are signing a new two year deal. Hopefully, Hill will sign a new deal. Hopefully, um, Batty will sign a new deal. Hopefully, Burns might not sign a new deal, but hopefully, you know, for some, he might. Um, hopefully, you know, some, you know, we want players to stay at the club. We don't want every season to get rid of 15 players because it doesn't work long term. Blackpool this summer, they did it very, very well. They probably, every year under the old regime of the old owners, they brought 15 players in, let 15 players go, give them a one year deal, and then they get a load of loans in, and then they start again next year. Where now they've recently got rid of all the tap that Grayson, the old manager, um, uh, brought in, I think it was, was it McFarland? I can't remember his name. Uh, I'd brought in. They let them all go. You know, they let a, a lot of their culture go. You know, Jay Spear and Armin Nanyale, um, Jack Almway, Mark Howard. That you know that they brought in. You know, Curtis Kilt was another one. Ben Hennigan. But then they brought 20, 17, 18 players in, and they just put them on two or three year deals. Now that for them, they needed that this summer. But we brought we brought fourteen plays in, I think, in the summer. How many are still here? You know, Morgan Boys is gone. Sam Stubbs is gone. Um, you know, Barry McKay's not going to be here much longer. Charlie Mulgrew's not going to be here much longer. Mark Duffy's not going to be here much longer. Wheeler's not going to be here. So if you go through all this, we'll only probably have about five or six of those players left next season. In camps being one, uh, the right back's only on loan in Janai Uh you know, Batty will hopefully sign a new deal. Ross will hopefully sign a new deal. So if you go through the list, Fleetwood have a loss of their key players. But if we can keep them under a new manager, that is important. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting one. A uh, very interesting one. Uh, I can't be able to... Um, I can't uh, see Bristol Rovers being able to afford Burns. Um, well, I guess we could set up a go for me. Uh, happy birthday, Paul. Gave us a shout out for the super subject. Uh, uh, a big shout out as well to Mackie's new podcast, Super Subjects Podcast. Give it a follow on Twitter. Um, big congratulations on the 12th, Ben. Can't wait, mate. Can't wait, pal. Um, the, the memories are oh, who they were, but I love the man chilling him away. 3 2, Dempsey in the last minute. But Bolton at home wasn't a great memory. Scump up away 2 0. Um, I still believe that we got rid of Uwe Rosa too early. I know we lost six in a row, but after that, we had a couple of winnable games at home. We played teams that was in the, like, the top six. We played Blackburn, we lost. We played Shrewsbury. We played Doncaster. They were all you know, in the top half. Doing well. Blackburn and Shrewsbury were in the top three. So, But Sheridan came and did a good job, even though he beat us the other day. Um, we did. And it was 3-5-2, wing-backs. Get a goal, defend on it, hit him on the count. But that was a way. And at home, we got in team spaces. And I like that. You know, we had a count under Uwe Rosler. We had a culture. And for the first time, I believe. Now, people, Fleetwood fans and fans will call me deluded here. Fleetwood, I'm sick to death of hearing you overachieved last year. What a job Joey Barton did. 
did we overachieve last season? I love Joey, don't get me wrong. I think he's a top bloke. Uh, many of them say he was always great with me. But last season, right, hear me out. Fleetwood, Alex Cairns, Lewis Gibson, Harry Souter, uh, Paddy Madden, Chet Evans, Barry Mackay, Paul Coots, Glenn Whelan, Josh Morris, Wes Burns, uh, Louis Coyle. Now, Louis Coyle's playing at a top-end League One club. Souter is now playing in the Championship. Louis Gibson is now playing in the Championship. Paul Coots is a Championship standard player last season. In my opinion, you could easily fit him in. Paddy Madden is a League One badman. Chad Evans could easily play in the champion, championship. Whereas Burns, he didn't really have his best season last year, but didn't even have his worst. Um, he kind of was meh, but, you know, he still had it. He still did okay. And then you've got Morris, who scored about 10, 11 goals. He's a, he's a decent League One player. Um, so... Yeah, I, I don't think we ever achieved last year. It's a bit like, I think it's what he, he, he's like saying. It's like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like saying you want a MacBook. No, you, you want an iPad for your birthday. You get a, a a big Mac computer, an Apple Mac, which costs about 500 quid more than the iPad. You know, oh, you want you want need a good thing, but you've got even better. You know, you've overachieved that way. Fleetwood last year wanted the Mac, they got the iPad Mini, which from about 10 years ago. That's how I can describe it. I don't think we achieved, overachieved at all last year. I think that squad was good enough for the playoffs. And Joey's bizarre tactics in the playoffs, in my opinion, and I've said this to him, cost us. You know, Danny Angie was left out and we called playing at left wing back. Cairns has made something the scapegoat, you know. <laughs> the, lad, the lad saved the penalty, made four class world saves, was man of the match in the second leg. Coyle got sent off, Paddy Madden got sent off. Nothing will be said, but Ken's the scapegoat. It's as simple as that. Um, uh, <laughs> um, keep the questions coming. You think Blackpool are going up this season? Unfortunately, I do. They're on a good run, the 10 unbeaten, good at home, don't concede many. So, if you don't hear from me for a while, when if they do go up, I'll probably have to run to Papua New Guinea, put it that way. So, um, a long break from YouTube, I think. Uh, remember, guys, if you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. We're getting so close to 1,000, sorry, 1,000, that sounds like a Fleetwood away attendance. Uh, 6,150, please subscribe. Uh, we're doing a special 19th birthday stream. I think I'm 19, but feeling 79 right now. Um, 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 you want Burns out? I don't want Burns out, but people said Josh Morris off. But Morris scored more goals in the last two seasons. Away. I like Wes as a player. I think he is superb. I think... His work ethic is very, very good. But in front of goal, he needs to improve, in my opinion. But work ethic, as a right wing back, Burns really suits. Burns, in my opinion, if we play 3-5-2, Burns will be here next season. But in a, in a winger, does he score enough goals? I don't think so. You want your wingers to be getting 10, 15 goals a season. You know, like Morris did last year. You know, Burns got, Burns got six this season. You know, he's improved of late. But I like his work ethic, but I just don't think... As a winger, he scores enough goals uh, or gets enough assists. Um, uh, um, Hill, Roster, Batty, the three most needed. Exactly. Hill we can build round. Um, he's a young player. signed a new two-year deal in 2019, so the contract does run up this year. Batty will stay. He was at Leeds United Academy, wasn't he? Um, so that's another positive for Fleetwood. Um, so I think he knows Grayson from his time there. Um, he's also loved his time. He, Holly was never playing, remember, but now he's playing every week, isn't he? And he, he's loved by the fans here. Um, some will go up fans, but um, he, he's loving it. He's playing every minute. And you now we've got Cairns. And I saw a thing this morning, Cairns has got to be captain. I think I agree with that because, you know, he's very vocal on the pitch. You know, when I watch games back, uh, to review the next game and try and uh, do a bit of analysis work. You can always hear him shout. He's the most vocal of the lot. And, you know, since he's come back, he's only conceded 10 goals in 14 games, I think it is. So, it's an unbelievable effort. Eight clean, seven or eight clean sheets as well in there. So, 
Um, you want someone that plays every minute to be your captain. Cairns has done that. I don't think there's been a player that's played every minute under. Maybe Connolly. Um, he's the, one of the only ones to play every every minute under um, Simon Grayson. Because uh, Vassell, I know, got subbed off in his first game after with about 25 to go. And uh, Batty's come off in a few games as well. Um, you know, Cairns hasn't played as much of late. Um I don't want rid of Wes. I don't want rid of... It was a joke. All it is, I don't think he scores enough goals. But if we play as a right wing back, I think he is perfect for it. Um, cheers, pal. Um, cheers, mate. Um, what a season we had. 8 on unbeaten. Um, I think we were... Um, I think we're a top nine league one team now. Top 12, I'd say. There's... A couple of good teams. Um, yeah, George is on his way home, which is very good news. Hopefully, Sam has a better experience than he did with us at Sunderland. Best of luck, Mr. Grayson. Everyone at Sunderland, barring Lee Johnson, who, by the way, hasn't gotten promoted just yet, but I'm saying just, I've struggled. Coleman struggled. Jack Ross struggled. Phil Parkinson struggled. It's a trend. Um, cheers, mate. Um, no, I don't. Um, I want rid of you, though. I'll put it that way. Um, uh, cheers, pal. Um, we had a goal disallowed, and that's why we lost this win. I saw that. Joey Barton said, um, you need to get in shape to referee a game. And he wonders why referees don't give him decisions. Oh, it's like me saying, oh, I, I kicked someone in the face, and... They wondered why they... Why, I wondered why I got punched back. A bit weird. Um, yeah, so going back to Grayson, done very well so far. Uh, five wins, only lost to three. Um, you know, nine games to go. I would have waited a little bit later, but I can see why they've done it now. Uh, because they want to get it done with. They want to get it over the line. They want players to sign off for next year. Batty, Rossiter, Burns, um, Hill... Uh, for example, so if they can sell board, we've got something to build around, and then we've not got many to bring in in the summer. I think we probably need seven or eight. We do, we do need a striker with Kyle Vassell going back. We, uh, he could, you know, we could sign him as a free agent. Janai Dineshi will go back, uh, Mikai will go back, Muldrew will go back, Duffy will leave, Wheelam will probably leave. So um, it's important that we um, keep these players around at the football club. Uh, cheers, Lenny, mate. Uh, would you prefer Blackpool to be promoted or Bristol Rovers to go down? Sorry, Rovers fans. I want you to stay up, but unfortunately, um, um, may happy returns. Thank you very much, man. Uh, will Bristol Rovers go down? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, no. That result the other day kicked them. I think it was a must-win game. I think it was a must-not-lose game. And uh, I'm just glad that we're not in the rest because, remember, Fleetwood were in that mess a few weeks ago. We were about eight points clear of the relegation zone. We gained an hand. The other teams that gained an We're now, like, 17 points clear of the bottom, bottom four. So, you know, that just shows you what a job Grayson has done. So, uh, a two-year deal. I might have given him a one-year rolling contract and see if he did anything in the second, the first year to reward him with a second. But, like I say, the contract only really matters to see how much the owner has to pay out the manager if he gets sacked. So, you know, Grayson's got um, that security. But hopefully he does well. And David Dunn as well, he, um, he's number two. He's got an experience in management with, yeah. not very good, uh, but with um, Barrow and Blair, Barrow and Oldham. Uh, mid-table. Mid-table. I'd say mid-table right now. Um, I... I just can't see him leaving right now, personally. He's on good form of Blackpool, firing for the, probably the first time maybe in League One in his career that he's at a club where he's enjoying it. He did well at Swindon in League Two. He did okay at Carlisle in League Two. But any time other in, in League One, he struggled. So, um, yeah, it's going, to be, it's going to be a weird one. We've got five minutes left of um, this stream. If you've got any more questions, let me know. But Grayson, again... Done well so far. Let me know your thoughts and I'll read them out. And um, very much looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on uh, Grayson getting appointed. Uh, do you think it's a good appointment, a bad appointment, uh, an okay appointment? 
uh, a laughable appointment, let me know because um, I'm very much interested to hear in your guys' thoughts. Um, um, England summary, about 7 0 England, mate. Uh, do you think we'll be able to visit Highbury uh, this season? No. Next season, yes, I hope so. Because um, uh, we've got nine of these streams here. We've done 46 live streams, which equates to over 100 hours of thinking. That's like four and a third days. So we've done a lot of these live streams. We've got nine to go, starting with Burton. Um, sorry, sorry, not Burton's called off. Sorry. Starting with I guess, Peterborough. And then we've got Wimbledon uh, away. So we've got Burton coming up. So there's a lot of, you know, big games to play. Uh, cheers, pal. Appreciate that. Um, I'm not softening, but he's done a good job. All I can judge as a fan is what he's done so far. And he's done very well so far. You know, I don't know who could have done better. Who would you want me? For people who didn't want Grayson, who would you have gone for then? Because who is out there that is currently doing better or do better than Grayson? Grayson's averaged 1.141 1, 1 points per game. He's got 17 points so far, Grayson. So 19 points, five wins, four draws, three defeats, you know, from 12 games. It's, you know, it's not a bad return, you know, especially when you play Bristol Rovers, Donny, Plymouth, Charlton, Sunderland, Accrington, Lincoln, Shrewsbury, Gillingham, Blackpool, Ipswich and Swindon. You know, I, I, I think I, I would have predicted maybe before then, probably about, about eight, nine points. We've got double that. I think that's a good return, personally. Um, you know, for a club of fleet of stature, I think we've got to pinch ourselves and remember where we are and who we are. You know, we're a League One club. We've been in here for this next year. We are eighth year. If Rochdale dip out and Peter go up, you know, we'll be the second longest serving League One side, uh, only one year below Gillingham. And I think that's a great achievement for a football club of our size. But, you know, last year, that squad, if Uwe Rosler had that squad, he'd be a championship side right now. And it hurts me to say that. But he wasn't, so we've got to move on. And Simon Grayson's the new manager. He becomes, I think, maybe the sixth or the seventh manager in League One for Fleetwood Town. We've had Alexander, we've had Presley, we've had um, Rosler, Sheridan, Barton, and now Grayson, so six. Uh, you know, they've, Alexander did a, an OK job. Presley did uh, an awful... He didn't do awful, he kept us up, but... You know, his football was drab. Sheridan did a very good job, I thought. Rosler, unbelievable job that first season. Not harsh, sack him in the second. I was devastated. Barton, OK. He did what was expected, but he never went above. We never overachieved. Um, and sometimes his press conferences would cost us. Um, but he did well for Fleetwood, Joey, in the end. And Simon Grayson so far has done an OK job. Uh, he was, but you've got to remember Fleetwood. Can they, they, why would the Cowleys come to Fleetwood? You know, I don't think we'd have the budget they'd be interested in that Portsmouth had. And Stendhal had had a great budget at Barnsley. I don't think, I, I don't think he'd come to Fleetwood anyway after the Joey Barton situation. Personally, um, it's it's hard to say, um, but you know. Um, we've got to rebuild in the summer. We've got a lot of time in the summer. This is not a rush summer this time. So the recruitment's got to be spot on. And the, the recruitment, in my opinion, will decide whether Simon's Grace, Simon Grayson's first season as a full interim manager at Fleetwood will be a successful one. This has been successful so far. But remember, he started very well at Blackpool and it ended quite sour. Um, but, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen and we go into the second year. I am heading off now, guys. Thank you very much for joining me for this short emergency broadcast. Short and sweet, I would say, like me, but I'm not I'm not sweet and I'm not short anymore, to be fair. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you're new to the channel, please remember to like and subscribe. Until next time, guys, I will see you later. Have a very good Thursday. I will see you Saturday from quarter to three. For a soccer Saturday watch. Actually, I shouldn't say soccer Saturday because that offends people. Football, soccer, football, no. Football Saturday watch along. No soccer. It's called football. Until next time. Until next time, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.
up the cod, Simon Grayson. New manager of Fleetwood Town. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Up the cods.